we have gone through motions of the earth that is rotation today we start with the revolution rotation causes day and night now i'll share powerpoint presentation with you yes i start with the earth's revolution the movement of the earth around the sun is called revolution and the path followed by earth to make one revolution around the sun is called orbit the earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit and takes about 365 days and 6 hours for completing one revolution so so you uh, yesterday i gave you in brief about earth's revolution the movement of earth around the sun is called revolution and earth revolves around the sun in a elliptical orbit and it takes 365 days and 6 hours for completing one revolution वो लास्ट का है Yes, students. The average distance between the sun and earth is one forty nine million kilometers. But the distance is not always the same. It can be attributed to the elliptical orbit of the earth. Elliptical means it is in oval shape. So the revolution takes place in oval shapes. That's why it is called elliptical order. At point of time, the earth is close to the sun. This position is known as Perihelion. Peri is a Greek word meaning about around. So sometimes it is a perihelion around the around the sun. It occurs on January third and distance is one forty seven million kilometers. So the distance of the sun is not same at all the times. So on third July the distance is one forty seven million kilometers. and normally we have seen the distance between the sun and earth is 149 million square kilometers students whereas on july 4 the earth is far away from the sun so this position is known as aphelion okay. the position perihelion is which which is earth is close to the sun students don't get confused they are two different words perihelion and aphelion so perihelion means earth is very close to the sun and aphelion means earth is far away from the sun it is approximately 152 million square kilometer distance from the earth between earth and the sun now we move towards the marching of seasons how seasons are occur seasons are caused by revolution of the earth the earth takes about 365 days and 6 hours to complete one revolution in order to avoid the confusion arising out of the fraction it was decided that an extra day to the month of february every fourth year would be added because normally we have 30 or 31 days and we it takes about 365 days and 6 hours so one fourth day would be added to the february month 
such a year with the 366 day is called a leap year the revolution of the earth round the sun and the inclination of earth axis are responsible for seasons such as summer autumn winter and spring as rotation causes day and night revolution causes different seasons the change of seasons are directly related to the equal lengths of day and night now this change in seasons are associated with two situations they are called as solstice and equinox so first we'll move towards the summer solstice it relates to the phenomena position of earth and the warm hot season in the northern hemisphere students summer solstice relates to the position of earth and the warm hot season in the northern hemisphere it is due to firstly the inclination of earth's axis and secondly because of sun rays fall directly on the topic of cancer it occurs on june 21 which is the longest day the region between now uh, going to the map the region between the arctic circle and the north pole receives sunlight 24 hour day and for few months the sun never sets here on june 21 the northern half of the earth is inclined towards the sun and southern half is away from the sun in simple words we can say more of the northern hemisphere is exposed to the sun as compared to the southern hemisphere the days are longer and nights are shorter in the north of the equator due to this the northern hemisphere becomes extremely hot and warm at the time in southern hemisphere it is winter season all conditions are reversed the nights are longer and days are shorter in the june so let's say the length of day at 90 degree north is 24 hours and the equator it is 12 hours at night and 90 degree south it is dark so students this was about the summer solstice now we move towards the winter solstice so you can see winter solstice occur december we can see the arctic circle tropic of cancer equator as we saw uh, summer solstice it was longer days were there and nights were shorter now here the phenomena has been changed it refers to the cold season it refers to the cold season that is november to february in the northern hemisphere so uh, summer solstice which refers to the hot warm season in the northern hemisphere and winter solstice refers to the cold season in the northern hemisphere at the time the south pole is tilted towards the sun and the tropic of capricorn receives direct rays of the sun south pole is tilted towards the sun and the tropic of capricorn receives direct rays of the sun the position of the earth is known as winter solstice it falls on december 22nd it falls on december 22nd this situation just opposite to that of summer solstice in the southern hemisphere the summer season longer days shorter nights and december 22 is the longest day so in it is december 22 is the longest day places between the antarctic circle and the south pole experiences 24 hours daylight the arctic region experiences darkness in the northern hemisphere it is winter season so students this was about the winter solstice now we have gone to summer solstice and winter solstice now we move towards the equinox what is equinox see equinox it is a 
Latin word meaning equal days and equal nights on March 21 and September 23rd. The days and nights are equal throughout the world. 12 hours day and 12 hours night. Students can observe this phenomena by noting down the time of sunrise and sunset. On these two days, both hemispheres are equally inclined towards the sun. The sun rays fall. The sun rays fall vertically on the equator, due to which the temperature conditions are moderate, neither too hot nor too cold. On 21st March, in the northern hemisphere, it is spring equinox, while it is autumnal, autumnal equinox in the southern hemisphere. So students, again, on 21st March, in the northern hemisphere, it is spring equinox, while it is autumnal equinox in the southern hemisphere. The opposite is the case on 23rd September, when it is autumn in the northern hemisphere and spring in the Southern Hemisphere students. Now we move towards the uh, phenomena of day and night phenomena. Yes, the uh, exposures to the sun and night. Days and nights are caused by the rotation of the earth, you all know, and revolution causes the seasons. So day and nights are caused by the rotation of the earth on its axis, which is tilted at about 6.5 degrees to the plane of elliptical or orbit. Due to this inclination, the whole world experiences the unequal length of days and nights. So students, now your doubt should be clear. Due to the inclination, the whole world experiences unequal length of days and nights. But the March 21 and June 21, the days are longer in the northern hemisphere. And same occurs vice versa in the south of the equator. So earth rotation on an axis, it is tilted at 65 and half degree to the plane of elliptical orbit. And because of this only, it experiences the unequal length of days and night. Now, from June 21 to September 23rd, the phenomena start reversing. The days start becoming shorter in northern hemisphere and longer in the southern hemisphere. So students, after June 21 to September 23rd, the phenomena starts reversing. What happens? The day starts becoming shorter in the northern hemisphere and longer in the southern hemisphere. On September 23rd, day and night become equal. So on which day the day and night become equal? Students, you should underline this in your book. 23rd September, day and night become equal. So it can be called a equinox. We have gone before on what is which dates are equinox. From September 23rd till December 22nd, the day length in the northern hemisphere goes on decreasing and in the southern hemisphere it goes on increasing. So from 23rd till December 22nd, the length of day goes on decreasing means days are becoming shorter in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere the days are increasing. In this way, again a pattern is rewards. After December 22nd, the day length starts increasing with the approaching of spring equinox. So when it starts, after December 22nd, the day length starts increasing with the approaching, with the coming of spring equinox. But the pool's experiences, either complete day or complete night, for six months duration. Yes. But this situation is not same at the poles, both North Pole and the South Pole. There it is changed. What happens here? Both the poles, North Pole and South Pole, experiences is completely six months days and six months night. 
Why so? It's because of inclination. If the earth had not inclined on its axis, what will happen here? Yes. There would be days and nights of equal length throughout the world. The situation as it like that the same type of equinox. So students, this was about the formation of day and night. Earth takes 24 hours to complete its one revolution. Now students, we have completed a chapter about day and about the motions of the earth, rotation and revolution. Okay, students.